We are honored to be joined by uh, Wayne Winborn, who is executive director of the Institute of Jazz Studies at Rutgers University in Newark. Good to see you, Wayne. Good to see you. You know, last time we, we, you had, you, we had you on, you talked about how important the Institute is. Remind us how important the Institute is and how it's only one of its kind in the nation. It really is, Steve. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me on again. It's really always a pleasure, really an honor to be able to talk to you and to share with your audiences the things that we've got going on here in Rutgers. The Institute of Jazz Studies is the world's largest archive and research facility dedicated to jazz in the world right here in downtown Newark, fourth floor of the Dana Library here. And we've got a cross section of collections, memorabilia, papers, very important information and content for scholars, researchers, casual jazz fans. We've got a library of over, bumping up on 300,000 recordings in virtually every format. So the historian and you can go back and listen to things from the 20s and 30s. If you're, if you're a local resident and you want to come in and just hear your favorite jazz artists, we've got virtually everything, virtually everything that's ever been recorded commercially in jazz. We've also got collectibles. Um, uh, Ella Fitzgerald's favorite gown, her favorite wig, one of Louis Armstrong's trumpets, Lester Young's saxophone. And the centerpiece of our collection, of course, is our own New Jersey resident, um, the, the, the kid from Red Bank, Count Basie's. Hold on, okay, you know, Count Basie. So, okay, we're going to show some pictures of Count Basie. Tell folks why Count Basie matters so much even today. Count Basie is one of the giants of American music, obviously rooted in jazz, but his influence really spanned across other genres. His career um, spanned the virtually entire 20th century. So you're talking about someone who was making music in the late 20s and 30s, a young band leader, uh, coming out of Red Bank, spending time in uh, New York, learning to play the organ, going to Kansas City, which was a hotbed of, of music and bars and nightlife because of the, the crossroads there between Oklahoma City and Kansas City across the, mid, uh, the Midwest and into the South. Um, his bands were among the most popular. Uh, there were radio broadcasts, which allowed him to get uh, notoriety in other cities around the country. But of course, they went barnstorming. And Basie was one of those leaders that A, was able to keep great musicians in the band, many of whom went on to become great soloists in their own right and jazz stars, but also have the longevity um, to continue post-World War II into the 50s, 60s. He became an iconic figure, um, close to people like Frank Sinatra. And, Frank, and so I was just going to say Sinatra as we show video. There are pictures I know of Sinatra and Count Basie because their collaborations, I've seen documentaries on both of them, yeah. many more with Sinatra because our family was obsessed from as far back as I can remember. <laughs> sure. They collaborated on some extraordinary music. And Sinatra loved jazz. Loved jazz, great jazz singer. The phrase, he had the respect of a lot of jazz musicians. Two, two, two Jersey boys getting together, made some extremely important albums. Uh, Sinatra would often say, we gotta get the Basie band in for this, uh, for some of the engagements that they would do in Las Vegas that became historic recordings. And Basie, of course, and a lot of jazz musicians loved Frank Sinatra. You know Frank Sinatra was, of course, very close to Billie Holiday, worshiped her. Um, That's right. But they love the phrasing, what he brought to it. And of course, audiences across America, I mean, it really of every stripe, loved, 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 loved Frank Sinatra. So it's, it's kind of cool that two Jersey guys were able to create that magic on occasion. Yeah, there's some other Jersey people. I'm going to ask you about Sarah Vaughan in a second, sure. Newark, from Newark uh, itself. But can you do this for me? Talk to us about Clement's Place, named after the great, uh, late mentor of mine, a mentor to many, the late Dr. Clement. Price from Rutgers, Newark. Talk Steve, about Clement's place. Steve, you caught it. You said he was a mentor. I, I considered Clem a, a mentor. He was a dear friend to me, was always very kind to me. Actually, Clem, the last conversation I had with him, uh, we were huddled up. He'd given a talk at the University of Scranton. I'd gone down to hear it. We knew mutual friends there. And we spent that evening at dinner. He huddled up in a corner with him trying to talk me into applying for what would become this job. I know he talked to other people. I have no illusions that he didn't recruit widely for this position. But it's just very special to me that Clem Price, great historian, scholar, um, uh, the historian of the city of Newark, distinguished professor of history here at Rutgers University, Newark, as you say, a mentor to a lot of us. It was Clem who, when um, the building we now refer to as Ruth Bader Ginsburg Hall, 15 Washington Street, 
Uh, I believe it was, a, it was the former law school in Newark back in the 70s through the early 80s. If and excuse not, me, some people wonder why Ruth Bader Ginsburg, because she graduated from Rutgers Law exactly School, right. but go ahead. That's exactly right, and taught there. And if I'm not mistaken, did moot court in that building. She sure uh, did. That time, that's right. Um, and so we're really proud to have that building named after her. When the building was being renovated and the talks and plans were being made for what was going to go on, you know, meeting rooms on the second floor, we have the Great Hall that lots of nonprofits, our community partners use for their gala dinners. It's a big, beautiful open space. What had been the mock trial courtroom, um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, was originally slated to be a convenience store. And the joke I tell people is that, look, I, I, I love some unnamed meat under a hot lamp as much as the next guy. But it was Clem, in talking with Nancy Cantor, our chancellor, said, no, 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 no. We, we, that's not what we need. What we need is a place for the community to gather, for student, fa students, faculty, staff, for folks to come in, for artists to join us. Clem loved good music. He loved jazz. He loved good bars. And so sadly, when he passed away suddenly, um, before this building was finished, uh, the decision was made to create that space and, and call it Clem's Place. Um, and it was, I was very fortunate. I was hired for the position and it was handed to me here, jazz club, do something. And as I tell people, I'm the luckiest cat in the world because I get to program that space. And we do a cross section of things. We've, we've come up with a, we've developed a very good reputation among musicians. So we do a mix of big names. We've had Delfeo Marsalis, uh, Stefan Harris has performed a number of times. He's now also on the faculty here. Um, we have local musicians. We have young emerging artists. We have students from our writing program do their readings once a month. Uh, we turn it over to an open mic for our honor students once a month. They call it the, the healing sounds of Newark, and, and they do hip hop and rap and do all kinds of music, some of which I hate, but that's good because ah. the young people need to do their thing. And I, I think the spirit of the place, the, the community, the, the exchange and mix of different peoples coming together, I, I think Clem would really love that and be happy with yeah, it. And, and folks, and let me do this, Wayne, for those who don't really appreciate, not that they don't appreciate, they don't know, so they can't appreciate. We did a half hour special hosted by our longtime colleague, Joanna Gagas, with NJ Spotlight News. Joanna was with us at the time, and she did a half hour special on Clement Price. So look at our website. You'll see it right there, steveoutabauer.org. Put in Clem Price, Dr. Clem Price, and you'll see Joanna's great work around that. Real quick, before I let you go, can you do Sarah Vaughan? 30 seconds on Sarah Vaughan, which is not fair to her, but we'll put some pictures yeah. up as well. One of the great voices of the 20th century, could have sung anything. Great jazz singer, born and raised here in Newark, cut her teeth um, at a Baptist church right up the street. Uh, some of her friends are still alive. Uh, one of the great American icons in music, great jazz singer, great voice. Um, she's had a postage stamp named after her and really comes out of a deep connection to the community here. Newark was such a, an important place in New Jersey to her um, and provided that sort of fertile ground for her to develop her talent and go on to, to global status as one of the great singers. And in Newark, you never miss Sarah Vaughan Way, you know, right where I'm talking That's about, exactly Wayne. Right. Um, exactly and by right. the way, Rutgers is, in fact, one of our higher ed partners. and. Um, introduces us to folks like Wayne, who's been with us many times. Wayne Winborn, Executive Director of the Institute of Jazz Studies at Rutgers University, Newark. Wayne, all the best to you and the team down there. Thanks, Steve. Best to you. See you soon. You got it. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Hackensack Meridian Health. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association, PNC, Grow Up Great, PSENG, NJM Insurance Group, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, and by Fedway Associates, Inc. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Many of New Jersey's children have been affected by COVID-19, but now that there's a safe and effective vaccine available for children ages 12 and older, you can help make COVID-19 history by getting yourself and your child vaccinated. Let's end this pandemic together and help all children get back to being kids. Visit HagentechMeridianHealth.org slash COVID-19 to learn more or to schedule a vaccine appointment today.